Get a job. Get a job. <laughs> Snyder and Gunn have very interesting and similar careers. Zack Snyder's first film as a director, Dawn of the Dead, was written by Gunn. Both have directed R-rated superhero deconstruction films, with Snyder's Watchmen and Gunn's Super. Both then stepped into the world of mainstream superhero films and forever left their style on the genre. With all that in mind, it's worth looking at both filmmakers and seeing how they envision the DC Universe going forward. Even though Gunn has only just taken the leadership position, his work on both The Suicide Squad and Shipmaker, excuse me, Peacemaker, and his recent announcements certainly give a hint at what his plans could be, and hopefully they are very, very good. Superheroes are mythical figures. They were created as mythic power fantasies for children to read. As time goes on, their stories have gotten more complex and parallels between them and mythic folklore and ancient gods has become widespread. This is an aspect that Snyder really dug into with his DC films. Man of Steel notably features a lot of Christ-like imagery around Superman. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice draws multiple parallels to superheroes as either angels or devils. The superheroes of the Justice League are incredible individuals with godlike abil abilities that are meant to be figures of aspiration. Or at least Snyder tried to do it, you know. Whether he succeeded or not, that's up, that's up for debate. Gunn looks at superheroes in a slightly different way. While both the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker are centered on the so-called villain's perspective, Gunn likes to explore the people behind the mask. He draws the audience in, make, in by making these larger-than-life characters more relatable and giving them human quirks and flaws that make them feel more like real people. Snyder sees the DC characters as mythic figures to be admired, but Gunn finds a way to show them as people. And I think that's going to be the, the stark contrast between Gunn's DCU and what Snyder did with the DCU. One of the biggest differences between Snyder's Gunn's take on the DCU is what comics they draw for inspiration. Snyder has spoken openly that he did not read comics in, the, in his youth and instead became a reader after the, after the 1980s with the publication of darker, more adult-oriented stories like Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns. Watchmen, phenomenal film. Snyder's DC films tend to draw from more recent comic arcs. In particular, his Justice League film drew heavily from the team's New 52 origins, including having Cyborg as a founding member and the major antagonist being Darkseid. Gunn, on the other hand, was an avid comic book reader and as a child and tends to draw inspiration from the Silver and Bronze Age comics from the 1960s until the 1980s. This is apparent in his DC film called The Suicide Squad, which drew heavily from the John Ostrander run on the comic in 1987. He drew from the company's rich history to, for obscure characters and even included Starro, who is the very first foe from the Justice League ever faced in the comics. In the film, Gunn's social media has been teasing various characters with an emphasis on less mainstream heroes like Mr. Terrific and Lobo. Jason Momoa, baby, I cannot wait for that. That's going to be amazing. Where, where Snyder favored a more grounded take on the DC Universe, Gunn is more willing to embrace the absurd aspects of the comics, again, which is going to be very different for the DCU. This became more clear after Gunn announced his plans for the DCU. Gunn cited comics like Grant Morrison's Batman run in All-Star Superman and Alan Moore's Swamp Thing as inspiration. He also cited a recent comic, Tom King's Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, as getting its own film. Gunn clearly has a love and passion for various comics which look to inform his cinematic universe, one with characters from diverse backgrounds and creative inspirations instead of the more unified genres like Zack Snyder drew from as, as more popular characters from the DCU. Superman is the first modern American superhero and the template for which all other superheroes follow. This is fitting that his 1978 feature film kicked off the superhero film genre, then Man of Steel was the kickoff film for the DCU, and that Superman is the first project announced under Gunn and Saffron's leadership of DC. The character is so well known and has been around for so long that he lends himself to be reimagined in many different ways, which is highlighted by both how Snyder and Gunn appear to approach the character. And again, I think I think James Gunn's, James Gunn's approach for his Superman is going to be much more welcoming for the general audience instead of, you know, the whole more serious, darker take on Superman. Snyder's Man of Steel retold the origin of Superman but put an emphasis on the character's alien origins. Krypton was expanded upon and the filmmakers opted to treat it like a first contact story. Snyder put Superman's alien origin as a defining aspect 
of the character. Gunn has teased his Superman film as also exploring the early days of Superman, though it would not be an origin story, but will focus on his time as a reporter for the Daily Planet. Not only is this an aspect often overlooked in Snyder's take on the character, but it puts more focus on Superman's humanity. Clark Kent may be from Krypton, but humans raised him as a human and walks among them. Snyder's emphasis was on the alien, while Gunn appears to want to explore what makes him human. Again, th this is the ultimate distinction between the two. Snyder was interested in the super, while Gunn is interested in the man. It's been a few months since James Gunn and Peter Saffron took over the DC. Their intentions are clear by now. They are relaunching and rebranding, hopefully, the franchise. The first chapter has, ap has aptly been titled Gods and Monsters. Gunn has quickly pointed out that from now on, the DCU will be interconnected be universe across films, TV shows, video games, and comics. This leads us to believe that there is no room for another version of the now defunct Arrowverse and all future animated offerings will be tied to a larger scope. Thank God the CW is garbage and it is trash. <laughs> Sorry to say bro. Gunn has also stated how ongoing projects will be uh, moving forward as separate universes, similar to the DC Black Label imprint, which houses all Elseworlds tales, Matt Reeves' The Batman Universe and Todd Phillips' Joker stands independently. At the same time, the last two offerings of the current slate of recently announced animated films, such as Crisis on Infinite Earths and Watchmen, are unrelated to future offerings. Good. Let it be its own thing, bro. Like, like we don't need all this shit. Snyder's DCEU was about building up to a fight against Darkseid. This is clear that, uh, that at one point, the original plan was for Suicide Squad to be closely connected to the early DCEU films and have them fight Steppenwolf before he was made the primary villain in Justice League. As more details come slowly into light regarding the new DCEU, it is interesting how Gunn's vision will be different. Gunn has pointed to Lanterns being important in setting up some overriding mythology to the DCU. This might play into Blue Beetle, which is now indicated as being the first new hero of the DCU, despite originally being made with the intention of being in the DCEU. Blue Beetle and the Green Lanterns both have alien connections, which ties into Superman and possibly the Authority, which I cannot wait for. I think the Authority is going to be amazing, bro. But now since Shazam, Black Adam, The Flash has flopped, DCEU is in the slumber right now, which might be the perfect opportunity for James Gunn to get back up with the DCU and get the DC brand back on track. To quote another DC film, the night is darkest just before the dawn. Have faith, my DC fans. 2025 will be up and running with the DCU back on track. Hopefully, James Gunn, Sir, do not fuck this up. <laughs> Love you all. Stay safe. Truth out. Possible homosexual. Must investigate further.